Yeah, sure. So I think it was going to be a, a quick kickoff. For, it was yeah. going to be uh, all wave introduction, then hand over to me. I've got to uh, hand over to Leon for a few slides and then come back to me and then right. we'll finish off with the Q&A. Right, right, right. That's, that's how it will be. So I'll be just quickly introducing and we can take it forward from there. Great. We'll just wait for a few minutes uh, because people are joining in right now. Great. Hi guys, uh, I think uh, we're just waiting for a few more people to join in. Uh, in the meantime, if all the attendees can hear us clearly, then please uh, share a one in the chat so that we understand that you guys are able to hear us. That would be really great. Just type in one and send it in the chat. So that will be an indication that you guys can hear me and you guys can also see the visual on the screen. Thank you, Vimal. Thank you, Pravesh. Thank you, Sneha. Thank you, Sagar. Really great of you guys to join in today. Thank you, Sachin. Great. Um, just waiting for two more minutes, guys. And then because I can see a few more attendees connecting. Uh, just to, um, so the session is going to be, you know, um, first we'll have a round of introduction. Then we'll have, uh, we'll hand it over to Steve. So Steve will be presenting, uh, you can say from the Blue Skip team. And later on, what will happen is we'll also open it up for question and answers. There are also additional slides, uh, which I guess uh, Leon will be uh, presenting. Um, and that is mainly around the post pandemic, you know, uh, solutions. So it will really be good for the current situation which we are going through. Um, if there are any questions, guys, what I would uh, request is you can use the Q&A uh, section to just put in your questions over there and towards the end of the session, we will come back to those and we'll go through the sessions one by one. We have especially got uh, Leon uh, and Steve on our side from the two state team who have been really gracious to join us. So they will help us out with the questions or doubts or anything whatsoever, right? <laughs> Excuse me. Great. So I think uh, we can start off, guys. Uh, so a very warm welcome, first of all, to all of you guys who have come in at this point of time. I know it's a busy schedule and still taking off time and attending this session. It's really great uh, for you guys. Um, just a simple introduction of Allwave. So my name is Jalji Tajani. I'm working with Allwave on the marketing team. And right now, mainly when we talk about Allwave, there are quite a few things which are happening in the space, especially with regards to communication and AV technology, right? We are you're all hearing about a lot of buzz around the space of communication. And over the last year, the entire workplace has changed. And this is where we are really excited for what the future holds. 
and this is especially uh, true at such a time when we are we are really excited to announce that we are part of the PSNI Global Alliance right now. So that means whatever work Allview has been doing at this point in the Indian space, we are now also executing projects internationally. And these are all in uh, standards based out of PSNI as well as Avixa. So really happy to announce that. Uh, second part, which I would really want to uh, stress about is right now the work place scenario has completely changed and it's not just in India, but entire world. So throughout the world, we are seeing a lot of new, uh, you can say workflows, which are coming in and the teams that are kind of, you know, adopting these new models of working or new ways of working are the teams that are also seeing a influx in terms of their productivity, in terms of their revenue, their bottom line, so on and so forth. So this is where exactly we are working with technologies such as Bluescape to kind of get you guys, you know, newer ways of doing the work, you know, everyone knows uh, Zoom and team calls, but this is where we are really excited about Bluescape and I hand over to Steve. So thanks a lot, Steve, for doing this. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Um, sorry, <laughs> can you just enable screen sharing uh, for me? Um, yes. Uh, so just a quick introduction. So Steve Pryor, I'll be uh, leading the presentation um, for Bluescape and I've got a couple of my colleagues uh, on there. I'm actually going to present this from um, from the Bluescape workspace. So uh, I'm just going to okay. share my screen in just a moment. A just a minor technical hitch. We're nearly there. <laughs> we need to have a technical hitch. Uh, Yeah, just while we're waiting, so we'll actually be sharing uh, the presentation from within the Bluescape workspace. I'll switch actually, over. actually, it's That's enabled fine. for you, so I think you can share. That uh, is now. Yeah, there we go. Right. Okay, I'm in now. Okay, sorry. Awesome. Quick, uh, sometimes when you uh, when you go into Zoom, it, it disables the uh, the presentation sharing. Um, so uh, welcome to uh, to everyone this afternoon. Thank you very much for. Uh, uh, for joining us. Um, I actually very slightly changed the title of the presentation to make it about bringing your work to life, because really it's not just all about uh, about being in meetings. Um, and we use Bluescape internally for all of our uh, internal discussions, presentations to customers, projects, etc. Um, and as you can see, um, Bluescape is, is a, a large infinite workspace, so we can actually contain all of our content assets um, inside the Bluescape workspace. And it's persistent, so it's there uh, whether you're in a meeting or when you finish the meeting, you can go back and get on with your work in the Bluescape workspace um, and then join back with colleagues for, uh, for review. So, so with that, um, I'm actually just going to share a, a presentation that I've uploaded into Bluescape. So we don't have to jump around to different applications. We can stay within the uh, Bluescape workspace to, um, to actually present our, uh, our information. Um, so just by way, just by way of an introduction, um, we'll we'll set the set the scene for my colleagues that are on. I'm going to hand over to uh, Leon Benjamin, who's our professional services director, who will uh, give us an insight into some of the trends around post-pandemic working. And then I'll switch back to me, uh, introduction to Bluescape um, and the solution itself, but also then take you through uh, the Workspace experience, what it looks like to actually do get work done inside the, the Bluescape workspace. And then we'll pause for some Q&A um, and we'll call out some next steps, uh, which might include a free trial if you're interested in finding out more about Bluescape. So myself, uh, so based in the UK, um, look after uh, EMEA uh, and India sales for, um, for Bluescape. I've uh, been at the business for just over a year, but I've probably been in the presentation market space uh, with organizations like Smart, um, Cisco, Polycom for about 20 years. Um, I'm also joined by uh, Tarlock, who uh, also based in the UK um, and looks after our partnerships across the EMEA and India region. And finally, uh, Leon Benjamin, who's our professional services director. Uh, again, many, many years. I'm sure Leon will do a very quick intro to himself uh, when he's presenting, but uh, many, many years experience around adoption and getting the most out of technology um, so that you uh, get a good return on your uh, on your investment. 
Um, so I, I think you know what, since the uh, since the pandemic, we really want to build a, a bit of context around uh, around Bluescape and, and some of the trends. So um, some of the things that certainly I've missed are the in person workshops where you know we maybe got the whole team together, we had some brainstorming, um, and it's really difficult um, with with standard uh, video video and audio conferencing tools to replicate the experience of everyone being there and everyone being able to share their ideas. So it really does throw up some challenges. And, and you know, with not having the benefit of everyone being in the, in the same room, how does everyone get their voice heard in a, in a video conference or an audio conference? How does everyone make sure that their, their information is, uh, is maintained? And, and we wanna create a more inclusive um, environment. So really, all, all organisations need to find a digital way to, uh, to, to really to um, make decisions more quickly um, and to improve productivity. Now that we've got a hybrid workplace, we're probably never going to go back to the situation where we were two or three years ago, where everyone was in the office. Um, we're now going to have a, 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 you know, this more hybrid working model where some people are working from home, maybe some people are working from a remote office. And then some people are maybe in headquarters or the main main office building. So um, with that, I'd like to hand over to uh, Leon who will talk us through uh, a bit around some of the trends for uh, for pand post pandemic working. Yeah, thank you, Steve. So hi, I'm uh, Leon Benjamin, um, Bluescape's professional services director. And um, I, I won't bore you with a long CV, but it is worth noting that in the last 12 years, the only thing that I've been doing unbelievably is helping large organizations get more people working from home or more people working remotely. And that's my particular area of expertise. And just to give you a, a sense of actually how hard it is to change the way people work. Um, Steve will know this um, because uh, he's ex Cisco, but prior, prior to the pandemic, Cisco had, and it will be the same for the other meeting vendors, actually, Zoom and Microsoft and the other usual suspects. Prior to the pandemic, Cisco had about 120 million WebEx accounts, WebEx meetings accounts sold into hundreds of thousands of customers around the world. And yet the, the average worldwide adoption of, that, of those accounts was only roughly about 20%. So whilst it sold all of these accounts, the actual active use was actually, actually, relatively speaking, quite low. And actually, it was the same for Microsoft and Teams. And uh, prior to that, Skype for Business, I myself have been involved in, um, I've supported companies that have rolled out Skype implementations three, four years ago to 35,000 employees around the world in like 50 countries and only 5% of people are using it after 18 months. So it took, it took a pandemic of global proportions to actually change the way people work. Because I can tell you now, prior to that, you had to drag people kicking and screaming to change the way they work. And um, as we get into probably some conversations here, we can talk a bit more about that. But what I wanted to really touch on today I think it's fairly obvious it's the world of work has changed forever. And I think we probably now live in a moment of history where change is so speeded up that we only see the present just as it's disappearing. And um, certainly a lot of the conversations that we have with our customers, ones that I've had over the last few years, is that um, this idea now of organisations being able to react um, in a more agile in a, in a more agile way to some of the global conditions, some of the global challenges. It's not just the pandemic. There are a whole bunch of other global issues which actually affect an organisation. And this ability really to um, to react is becoming, uh, from what we can tell, from what we can tell, is becoming one of the most pressing um, and certainly most talked about. Um, uh, capabilities um, that organizations face at the board level. Um, and I would say, I, just before I get into this, I would say that um, organizations are now at a point where, um, you know, where they need to have a capability to react 
to change before before the case for change becomes desperately obvious. And hopefully some of that will come out in what I'm going to talk about over the next few minutes. Before I start, I just want to bring your attention really to the centre of this slide. Um, about three years ago, a chap called Daniel Suskind, he's written quite a few books. He's a, I think he's up at Oxford or one of our, you know, one of our big universities as a researcher and a professor. But he's known here in the UK anyway as being a, a somewhat of, a, of an expert and visionary around the future of work. And um, um, there's a very interesting story from, uh, from his book, which I've read, obviously, where he just where in this book he he describes all of the major technological waves which have had, you know, almost almost a tectonic impact on the way on society and on and in business and and in government as well. So he he plots from kind of prior to the industrial revolution through the industrial re revolution, and he is a really interesting story where he said that. In the United States, when, when, we, when they introduced uh, ATMs, cash point machines, um, back in the 60s stroke 70s, there was an absolute uproar and there was an immense fear from all of the bank tellers saying, well, you're going to put us out of business because the major, the, you know, the most common reason for people coming into a, into a bank branch was to get cash. And actually, in that same year when ATMs were launched, um, in the United States, banks hired an additional 64,000, which was a big number back then in the 70s, 64,000 new bank tellers were actually hired by banks rather than fired as the result of introducing ATMs. The reason I'm making this point is that up until, up until now, every single technological change actually has, full, has fulfilled its its vision if you like in as much as it's created more jobs than it's destroyed and the reality now is that that has changed it's changed uh, uh, fundamentally and you'll see as we step through i won't go through all of these stats but as we step through some of these you can see now that for the first time in the history of humanity ai and robotics will actually destroy more jobs than they create and the implications are really far-reaching they're far reaching for employees, they're far reaching for businesses who are now serving non-employees that potentially are on this thing that we're calling universal basic income. It's being introduced quite, quite um, aggressively actually in the UK, in, in Europe. In the UK, we're trialing it in one particular area in Wales, Denmark, Sweden, quite a few, Germ Germany have started a trial as well because governments now realize that we simply can't employ everyone. And that will be as a result of the introduction of AI and ro robotics. And I think for me, you know, if I was running a large organization, this would be, this would be at very much at the center of my attention, if you like. And to support that, you can see that both the World Economic Forum and McKinsey um, at the start of this year made these predictions, you know, 50% 50, 50 of employees will need reskilling by 2025. Mm -hmm. And I'll just I'll just do a really small plug. One of the things that Bluescape is unbelievably strong at is um, uh, standing it up as a very comprehensive learning environment. But we can talk about that another time. And then you've got McKinsey saying that up to 100 million, and this is by 2030, that's only eight years away. Um, 2025 is only three years away, really. Um, so you've got this tectonic change taking place in the in in the employment market around reskilling, and indeed repurposing, if you like, not necessarily making everyone redundant, but repurposing what people do. Um, and you know that's got some um, some some pretty serious implications. Um, and on top of that, around you know, around, around what's been happening in the last 21 months, 22 months, obviously the world of work has changed forever. And you can see again from these stats is that there's a, there is a trend now for a lot of organizations to make home working stick, um, or at least to create hybrid working environments. 
that accommodate uh, a wide spectrum of, of effectively employee and employer preferences around where people work. But the interesting, the interesting thing is that, um, you know, in the last year and the last 18 months, the world also is full of contradictions. So if you look at the right hand side of the slide in terms of, I mean, it's absolutely mental when you consider that by all, depending on who, who you, depending on which organization you believe and which one does the calculations, but the general consensus is that the global economy has contracted by about 30%. And that's obviously different in, in, in different countries. But, you know, in the UK, I know, I think the Bank of England were talking about um, during the period of the pandemic, um, our, you know, our GDP, our growth has contracted by something like 20%. And yet in the UK, we've got, we've had the largest ever increase in new businesses registered since 2012. Um, France and Germany have seen the same thing. In France, you can see here that 84,000 new businesses were registered actually, actually at the end of last year. It's the largest ever recorded. And in the US, again, where obviously the economy has been decimated, we've got these 1.5 million new businesses registered in the USA at the end of, um, at the end of 2020, and only a very small drop in VC funding. So there's still a wall of money out there uh, to fund new businesses, which are, um, you know, frankly, they are, they're adapting faster than they're finding gaps and opportunities in the market that large organizations can't find because they don't have this agility and that capacity to change before the case for change becomes desperately obvious. So with that backdrop, next slide, uh, please, Steve, with that backdrop, uh, what are the key challenges of post-pandemic working? Well, I'm going to step through these, and again, just in the interest of time, just quite quickly, but I want to, um, I just want to tell a couple of stories as well. So at the start of this year, when I wrote this, um, one of the things I, <clears throat> I said <clears throat> to my colleagues and to the market and to my network was that, um, because I'm seeing it in real life, is that um, people have, individuals have completely different perceptions or rather they sit on a spectrum. Um, they have completely different per uh, perceptions around their perceived risk of infection, a viral infection. And I wanna illustrate this with a, uh, with a real story I won't mention the, the, you know, the company, it's a technology company that had a customer that phoned them up and said, and this was at the start of this year, they said, we're trying to get people back to the office, but we're having a bit of a nightmare because we've got, um, we've got 5,000 employees, we've got buildings in London, and we've got, as I said, people sat on this spectrum. At one end of the spectrum, you've got employees that are saying, I'm still scared, um, I know the government's saying it's okay now, but I don't want to get onto public transport because a new variant has just been released or a new variant's come out. And then you've got people right at the other end of the spectrum that have a very low perceived risk of infection saying, I'm not coming back into the office until it's completely normal. I don't want to queue in a lift that can only hold two, you know, can, where I have to socially distance in a lift. I don't want to be able to, you know, I don't want to have to wear a mask. And indeed, we've seen... I mean, um, you know, we've seen in the US, we've seen we've some, seen some organizations that are trying to create no touch environments in the office to accommodate these different, lev these different uh, levels of perception around perceived risk of getting back into the office um, to the point where, you know, doors have been, do doors have been swapped out, no handles, there are foot pedals on the floor, the doors slide, and you can walk into a room. And as you'll know, obviously, from, from your own experiences, or sorry, you'll know from, from, from the way tech vendors are approaching these challenges, is that you can now walk into a room, talk to it, and not touch anything. 
Um, we know of some organizations that are now changing the, you know, the badges that you use to badge in, um, you know, into the lobby and go through the barriers where now they're sort of um, touch sensitive, so they don't actually need to touch any surfaces. So one of the big key challenges has been getting people back to the office. How do you get them back? And also how do you, how, which I'll come to in a second, how do you balance that with the, with the huge potential saving, uh, savings in property footprint by trying to keep people, uh, people at home? The other, like, you know, I've, I've said here for some people it's been a dream, right, home working, and, but for others it's been a nightmare. And in the UK, we know, we know for a fact they haven't started to emerge. But, you know, as I've said here, the rush to get people home from uh, working from home wasn't a revolution. It was a reaction. It needed to be done very quickly. A lot of rules and actually a lot of laws were broken. I mean, the fact that we send people home, most companies have broken every health and safety rule or every health and safety law in the book. There is a tsunami of pending, um, here in the UK anyway, there's a tsunami of, of pending claims from employees for everything from back pain to mental health issues. And they haven't actually started to come through, but employers are really expecting it. So how do you get, how do you get home working to stick? And how do you um, create that balance between working from home uh, realizing property savings and working in a hybrid way. Now, um, the 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 I mean, I know um, I know of one one entire sector here in the UK. It's actually in media and entertainment. Um, so I'm talking about ITV and the BBC and really big television and film production companies that have you know that have relied very heavily on on uh, on physical interaction to create all of the ideation that produces all of our great films and television programs a lot of those organizations they are they're rubbing their hands and they're saying oh my god because obviously the the, the two biggest bills the company ever pays is the salary bill and the real estate bills and a lot of them rubbing their hands saying how can we um you know, dramatically reduce our, bottom, our our property costs to you know to improve our bottom line. Um, but what they what they haven't realised is if you've got a building with two thousand people in it in central London, and you want to get all of those people working from home or most of them working from home, what you're actually doing is you're you're going from one building with two thousand people in it to 2000 buildings with one person in right and in that in those particular one person offices you've got an immense around of uh, immense amount of uh variability uh based on <clears throat> but actually based on the income levels and the type of property those people have so what are the support costs what are the equipment costs um uh that you'd have to you, that you'd have to meet in order to support to uh, you know two thousand people in two thousand buildings. So a lot of organisations are facing this challenge of that achieving that balance. You know, does it actually cost less to support two thousand people, you know, one person in two thousand buildings, or is it cheaper to have two thousand people in one building? We know from the conversations that we've had that organisations are grappling with that challenge. In the um, in the city of London, we have an area there called um, Canary Wharf. Our tallest buildings are down there. Some of you may know it. We've been told by a lot of uh, property developers and, and facilities managers that down there they're currently got one hundred thousand seats. You know, HSBC and J.P. Morgan and Barclays, all of the usual suspects are down there. They are they are never ever seeing a time when more than 50% of those seats will be occupied ever. So, you know, some organizations are achieving the, this balance, but many of them are actually still struggling with it. Um, I could go on and on, but um, virtual leadership. Now, that's a major, major challenge because again, how do you, mm -hmm. how do you as a, as, a, mm -hmm. as a leader of an organization continue to give it the direction and guidance that it needs remotely 
And again, we've seen some pretty poor reactions to the way, for example, a CEO might deliver an all hands meeting just with a laptop sat at home. So executive remote working solutions are beginning to uh, are beginning to be rolled out. And I, I, I know that some organizations are, are taking this very seriously. They consider virtual leadership to be a major, major uh, plank of their strategy for achieving, achieving agility, but also um, being, in a, being in a reasonably constant communication with their employees because they're not in a physical space. And I'll tell you now, I'm sure Steve will say, would, would back me up on this, but again, prior to the pandemic, you know, I was involved in, uh, just before I came into Bluescape, I was uh, working with Ernst and & Young. And, and again, prior to the pandemic, Ernst & Young, um, Ernst & Young's non-client travel was $800 million a year. They had 34 high-end Cisco telepresence systems all around the world, 5% utilized. And I was, I was working with them to save, save them 10% of 80 million, okay? And what we, what we found, not just there, but historically, is actually senior leaders aren't very good online, right? They're not very, they, you know, they're not very good at projecting their, their, um, their character, their personality. I, I know several organizations which actually coach CEOs when they're about to present in the offline world and they're, they're not very good online. So virtual leadership, you know, as a result of the pandemic, senior leaders have been really unprepared for projecting their vision, persona and influence on camera. And again, we, we, can, we think Bluescape is a credible um, industrial strength uh, solution to implementing virtual leadership uh, programs. Mm -hmm. Productivity, well, and again, I'm conscious of time, Steve, so I'll, I'll, I'll try and get through this quickly. Um, productivity, it's interesting because I'm sure you've seen it yourselves, is that some organizations have seen productivity fall, others have actually seen it rise. Some, with some organizations, it's, it's kind of stayed, it's effectively stayed the same. But the reality is, to my point earlier, um, I mean, here, here's the thing. If you've got middle or low income families, I, I've seen families that have got two parents, two kids. Um, both parents were, pri were previously working in a contact center. Uh, they've been sent home because they can't work in the contact center. They've got small houses and small properties. And you're literally, you've literally got two parents in the same physical room doing customer services. So they might work for a utility company or a telco, and they're doing regular customer service in the same physical room whilst they have two children in the back doing being homeschooled that's what i meant by a nightmare and actually that that has created issues around productivities and some quite big issues around mental health and so a really big challenge for organizations is um well well think about it how do you how do you do better with less people and i'm sorry to be that blunt but if again if you go back and look at the trends around work the reality is that organizations are, are going to have to put themselves in a position where they can get more productivity from less people. Um, and wellness and productivity are very, are very heavily, um, uh, right, okay, I've got that, very heavily, um, Steve, your, your, uh, your, um, oh, sorry, my things on the, yeah. yeah um, <clears throat> okay, so productivity and wellness are heavy are inextricably linked. Um, if you don't have well employees, they're not gonna be very productive. It's fairly obvious, but again, um, organization very, very high up on, on the uh, board agenda is, is productivity and wellness. To my point earlier about the speed of change and, the, and, the, and the, us living in this moment of history, communicating change is going to be a major, major challenge for organizations. Um, how do they, um, and, and because we've got complete, because we've got changing conditions on the ground, you know, just recently we've had a new 
viral, a new coronavirus variant. It's thrown a lot of all, a lot of uh, countries into um, into react mode, but obviously they need to react. So the, the 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 conditions on the ground are changing all the time, and as a result, um, you know, organisations, especially larger ones, haven't been very good at uh, communicating that in a timely way. And I'll give you a bit of an example. And again, all of these things are a little bit connected. Um, we were talking, I was talking recently to one, uh, to one organization where they're in, a, they're in a building, it's got, you know, 50 floors, it's in the center of London, um, but they lease that building. And in the, on different floors, you can actually have different, different companies occupying different spaces on each floor. But each company has a completely different policy related to the way people work, whether it's masks, distancing, distancing vaccination, non-vaccination, and then you've got all of the common areas in a physical building, right, which is owned by a landlord, and the landlord might set some policies. So in, in both the physical environment and the home environment, there's a need for organisations not to, you know, almost to be constantly communicating with their employees. And the reason why this is also very important, um, and it kind of bleeds into this whole employee experience, which I'll just very, very touch on very, um, very briefly, is that with all of these things, all of these macro things going on in the world, um, and the changes in the way that we work, organisations also need to provide a means for employees themselves to be able to shape the way they work going forward. In other words, a small number of people deciding how 10,000 other people might work actually isn't going to work. And the way in which you can get people to change the way they work is to give them an active role in defining what the future of work looks, looks like for them. And then finally, employee experience, massive challenge, gain. Um, it's not, it's, it's, it's a bit of a plug, but again, Bluescape as you'll, hopefully seen it in a, in, in, in a short while, is incredibly well suited to providing a highly visual, deeply immersive um, onboarding experience for employees. And, you know, we, we all know that there have been hundreds, thousands of employees um, hired, even during the pandemic, who have never seen their, never met their team in person and never been to the office. And of course, we're seeing really clunky. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard stories actually of employees being hired in businesses this year where the, the, the experience, the onboarding experience is so disconnected and so poor, they've actually ended up leaving very shortly after joining an organization. So the employee experience as it relates to the pandemic and particularly that experience coming into the online world is again, we're seeing that as being a, I mean, you know, look around LinkedIn, Google. It's a really, really big deal now to provide these um, uh, really effective onboarding experiences, not just for hiring and onboarding, but going forward um, as you work within a particular organisation. Um, next slide, Steve. Yeah, well, thanks for that, Leon. So I think I'm, mm. I'm just going to jump to the uh, introducing the Bluescape uh, section now. Great, to keep over back to you. On, uh, back on time. Yeah, thanks a lot. Great, over to you. Um, so really, uh, just to do a little bit of introduction now around Bluescape itself. So we're, we're an enterprise work platform that's built on the latest um, virtualization um, and cloud technologies that really enable hybrid teams to perform at their best, irrespective of their, where they are, whether they're working from home, from the office or from a remote location. But more importantly, to do that securely and at scale, we all heard about you know, some early uh, issues that came about with people using un un open and unpassworded video conferencing at the start of the uh, the pandemic. So, you know, organisations that are dealing with uh, confidential and commercially sensitive information need to make sure that um, as they start to roll out these tools, that they are maintaining uh, the, the security level. Um, we've got a broad set of customers in many different verticals. I've just called out a few of our most popular verticals here. Uh, Leon mentioned media and entertainment. 
earlier on, but we work with many of the world's largest uh, entertainment uh, and media organizations. Um, Disney, for example, used Bluescape to um, storyboard all of their recent animation movies because it enables to bring people both in the office and those who are remote working in and have a say and, and be able to contribute to the session. And likewise, in enterprise, it's finding a way that organisations like Ford wanted to move away from um, a PowerPoint uh, oriented culture and be able to express themselves in creative meetings and, and any form of, of project and, and uh, employee interaction so that everyone gets a voice and everyone is heard and not just a, a one way communication uh, from, a, from a presentation. Um, but also uh, an important area for us is, uh, is in the defence and defence contractor market. Uh, Bluescape is a highly secure uh, product. We have options for cloud, uh, virtual cloud and also on-premise deployments. Um, and many of our uh, government and defence customers um, are taking advantage of being able to run Bluescape in their own data centre um, to make sure that the sensitive data doesn't even leave their own, uh, their own networks. If we look at where Bluescape fits in the whole um, ecosystem, um, so we really sit at the, uh, the core or the hub of, of collaboration. And um, so when we talk about things like content creation tools, so, you know, Word and PowerPoint, some of the Adobe and, and Photoshop type tools that are used in business, um, it's really uh, those content creation tools are where you actually create the work, but not where you share and discuss that information with others. Likewise, in a, in a meeting solution, it's where you can share your screen, but not where you have a true collaborative environment of people being able to share um, their ideas and creating a more interactive session. And with cloud, uh, many people use uh, cloud tools uh, to store documents and information, tools like SharePoint and OneDrive um, and uh, Google Drive. But you, you really use that to maybe make comparisons between different uh, documents, but not where you, you actually organise and present that work with, um, with their colleagues. And also with, uh, with chat functions, you saw earlier my chat uh, popped up, so apologies for that. But many companies use Slack um, and, and Teams internally as a chat communication. But I know certainly what I find it's I quite often quicker to pick up the phone or, or you know, join a, a, a session with someone than it is to type. So chat is great for quick messages, you know, have you looked at this or can you meet me in an hour? But really it's not where you wanna build a persistent um, uh, and referenceable record of, of, of a particular project and where, where information is, is being shared in a persistent fashion. And there's a big trend at the moment for online whiteboards and to a basic level, you know, Bluescape is, um, is also um, an online whiteboard, but it's, it's really where you want to crack, uh, contract and, and work together to, um, to bring together your, uh, your ideas with pens and sticky notes. But it's not just about that isolated uh, you know, whiteboarding session, it's about the whole project and how you bring that all together. So really, um, if you think about Bluescape as being the place where um, the whole team can work together, share all of their content and orchestrate their visual content to make better and faster decisions, it, it brings together all of the elements of, of a project. And as I said earlier, you're able to interact from anywhere securely on any device. Um, Bluescape is ISO 27001 certified, which, which means we have independent penetration tests and and for external security uh, checks on our on our solution to make sure it's as, as secure in the, in the market as possible. And it's so much more than just sharing your screen um, and being able to see one presenter at a time. So really, if you think about what's in it, what's in it for you to use a tool like uh, like Bluescape? Well, I think everyone wants to be a better storyteller, be able to uh, maybe like Leon articulate, you know, many different life experiences that he's come across in um, in, in business. Um, and because it enables you to create that uh, more dynamic um, presentation, that's more than just sequencing through like I'm doing here today, just stepping through a, a very fixed path. On, uh, on PowerPoint. Um, within the Bluescape workspace, you're able to jump around, bring together multiple content assets and, and therefore hold the attention of the audience uh, much longer and make them feel more engaged because if they want to bring up a point or make, uh, make some notes, 
they're able to do that directly into the uh, into the workspace. And reflecting back on that uh, picture I showed right at the beginning with a sort of interactive workshop with post-it notes and people drawing on the walls, um, having a, a, a shared canvas to do that across multiple locations means that everyone can uh, get their ideas and their thoughts across and no one is ignored in, in the meeting. And it makes it a, for a much more dynamic um, session. And then once that uh, brainstorming session is finished, um, you can actually organize all of those ideas in this persistent workspace. If someone missed the, the session, they can come back into the workspace and review those ideas later. So it gives you a much more flexible way of, of working. And finally, really embracing uh, the term of, of, of hybrid work. So for those of you that are in the office and have access to things like large touch displays or large format screens in meeting rooms, those can be used um, for Bluescape uh, work in the, in the office. For those that are working remote, they can see all of that information directly from their, work, uh, from their worktop. And for some of the um, more specialised creative tools, for example, we've got a new partnership with Wacom where we're also starting to use their touch, uh, touch tablet devices to actually bring creatives uh, together in a virtual workspace and get, work, uh, get more work done. So really, you know, it's much more uh, about being able to create an inclusive workspace environment and not just about, uh, just about screen sharing. And if we want to summarise uh, how Bluescape can be deployed on, on a number of different devices and bring together all of your existing applications in a common work, workspace environment, it's really about turning information into meaning. So having all of the content assets and data available to you to make a more informed decision. And uh, there was a recent quote from Fast Company around the future of collaboration, where they said the patchwork quilt of video conferencing services and web based tools that we've all been using intensively for months will rapidly evolve into a more sophisticated and more powerful interface. So what they mean there is by bringing all of your um, existing applications together in a single workspace you'll be able to get the best of, of both worlds, being able to uh, both interact and collaborate uh, irrespective of where you are and on what device that you're using. If we look a bit now about the, the sort of features of, uh, of Bluescape itself, so I mentioned earlier at a very basic level, we're, we're a whiteboarding tool. So yeah, at the bottom left there, you can use um, you know, drawing tools to, uh, to, to bring up sketches and, and diagrams and have a, a very open brainstorming session. And everyone can contribute in the workspace simultaneously. So it's not about one person passing the ball to another so that they can interact. Everyone can interact and see what everyone else is doing, see everyone else's ideas all simultaneously in the workspace. We can bring in templates and note cards. So um, actually take a, um, a, a format, maybe a Gantt chart or uh, more agile working tools, bring those into the workspace, add your note cards and bring the information to life so that everyone gets their, their voice heard. And we've got connectors and, um, uh, and shapes that we can bring in. So you can very easily create a workflow diagram um, and be able to share and contribute those ideas with others. And you can also bring in um, documents. So you can upload a document. So it's actually stored inside of Bluescape and that allows you to review and annotate the document. Or maybe you actually wanna take advantage of the co-working facilities on tools like SharePoint. So you can bring a link um, to a SharePoint document directly inside of Bluescape and then actually co-edit that document uh, with colleagues. So we operate in those, those two modes. So um, you're able to get the most out of the, the session and not have to jump out to Word or jump out to Excel if you want to review some data or some documentation. And here it's about bringing all of those content assets together. So, you know, in the top left, you can have your, uh, your whiteboarding session um, that you created. Everyone's got access to that. You can bring in your PowerPoint documents. You can bring in standardized templates. And we also, uh, on the right-hand side uh, there, you can see we have a built-in video conferencing tool. So you can continue to use your Zoom or your Teams or your WebEx, or Bluescape has um, an inbuilt 
video conferencing called Bluescape Meet has a, an inbuilt video conferencing tool where if you just want a quick ad hoc meeting with a few colleagues that happen to be in the workspace at the same time, then it's very easy to start up that, uh, that conferencing call. Everyone can bring their, uh, their data um, together inside the workspace and review that. But you don't have to work synchronously, so it doesn't have to be a meeting centric um, solution. So you can bring your, your assets into the workspace, go off and do some work on that and then arrange a review with your colleagues or maybe leave them um, a note to go back and, uh, and check the work that you've done the next time they're able to join in the workspace. So we're really breaking that link from being a, a purely meeting centric solution to a persistent workspace that everyone can access all at the same time. And we have uh, we can organize the workspace. So as you can see, it, it, it can be a vast um, digital workspace, but we organize that uh, conference uh, workspace via canvases. So the blue and the, the yellow um, borders there uh, denote a canvas and that canvas um, contains that information. Think of it as like a filing cabinet or a bucket for that part of the of the workspace. And everything is searchable. So give your give your canvas uh, a meaningful title and then it becomes searchable um, in using the search function that you can see on the left hand side. So that enables you to jump very quickly between different areas um, of the workspace. And different people can be working in the workspace in different areas at different times. So um, you know, it, it's not something that everyone has to be in the same place at the same time. We do have a follow uh, function. So um, you, if you want to be the leader of the workspace, you can start to follow and then you will follow exactly. So a bit like a presenter mode. So in presenter mode, you follow uh, the actions of someone else in the workspace to, to keep everyone else on the same page. And we also have uh, an inbuilt range of templates. So something we've been doing over the last few months is increasing the number of, of standard templates that come with the product. So you can see a small example um, here, but we have uh, well over 100 um, standard templates that you can use. So if you want to have a standard format for a meeting or a project or a design review, all of those templates will exist within um, Bluescape. But if there is a specific template that you want to uh, create yourself or uh, create a customized template, then you can do that, save it inside Bluescape, and then it's available for everyone else to use. We also support real time video playback, so you can upload a, a piece of video into Bluescape, you can play that back. And that playback is synchronized across all the different canvases, all the different workspaces that are people that are connected. Very different to a you know, somewhat slower frame rate um, playback that you get in, um, in traditional video conferencing. So by viewing it from the browser uh, via the Bluescape workspace, we ensure that the content is synchronized. And that's been a valuable feature uh, for many of our enterprise and media and entertainment customers. But you can also capture frames from those videos and then annotate on top of the video. So, you know, maybe you want to make some notes and some changes to uh, a piece of advertising uh, creation or other uh, other materials that uh, that you might be working on. So it's very easy to uh, to do real time um, video uh, annotation within uh, within Bluescape. And then to sort of wrap up with uh, with round the uh, round the, the the interface. So on the top left we have uh, the Bluescape workspace setting. So the blue uh, button in the top left takes you back to your um, your My Bluescape. That's where all of your workspaces that you've been invited to exist. So you can jump to those. You can search on the the titles and content within that workspace. Next to that, you've got the search icon. So uh, that, as you saw earlier, allows us to jump quickly to different canvases and different points in the presentation. Next to that is the center wall um, button. So here, if you have a number of touchscreens around your organization, doesn't have to be in the same office or even the same country, it can be anywhere globally. Um, everyone has a, a rolling pin number. Um, and with that pin number, you can type that pin number in and share and effectively pair your desktop and your workspace with that particular tool. So you can have many, many different people in different offices all seeing the same content at the same time. And on the left hand side, we've got the content creation and whiteboarding tools, uh, the undo or the oops button at the bottom, uh, bottom left, and then our, our pan and zoom uh, functions at the bottom right. 
And top right is where uh, we collaborate. So you'll be able to see uh, the little icons about who, who is actually in the workspace at that time. You can click the button to, uh, to meet with other people, or you can leave comments and search on comments that have been left on the workspace so that you can uh, uh, make a note and send a comment to someone when they get an email. When they click that link in the email, it will take them directly to the point in the workspace uh, where the change has been made so that they get a chance to, uh, to review that. And really just to summarize, so you know, moving from a, a somewhat analog world on the right-hand side to a more digital world on the left-hand side, um, Bluescape can help to, uh, to streamline and digitize your, your workflows and, and even create uh, more effective and more efficient meetings or even less meetings because all of the information is persistent and held in the, um, held in the workspace. So uh, people can go back and review that and do their work uh, late, uh, but they're in their own time zone or you know, whenever their work time permits. Um, and we're really empowering users with a, a collaboration tool and that makes sure that everyone's voice is heard in the workspace and that um, you know, people don't feel as though they're not able to uh, con con uh, contribute or get their voicing, uh, voicing heard. So we really create that, uh, that persistent, permanent, uh, auditable workspace that everyone can, um, can review and a permanent record of, um, of any projects and things. And so with that, I think uh, we've just got a few minutes left for, uh, uh, for Q&A. So maybe I'll just hand back to you, uh, G, if you, uh, um, I don't think we've had any questions through the session, but um, yeah. if, there's anyone, um, uh, if you want to sort of wrap up and then we'll just talk about the, uh, the call to action with the free trial, if anyone's interested. Sure, I, I actually had a question myself, like uh, when, how many people can collaborate, you know, at a time? So that uh, yeah, I mean, so it's, it's actually limit? an unlimited number. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's a no, it's an unlimited number of uh, of people. Um, if I just jump out of the presentation mode and just click on here, you can see that I've got a number of different uh, collaborators in this particular uh, workspace, um, and they could all join the workspace, and everyone would be able to. Um, uh, add, add um, post-it notes or note cards, uh, make comments, make, uh, make notes on the workspace or upload content. So right. anyone that's uh, in the workspace can, uh, can collaborate and there's no limit to that. Perfect. And if, like, let's say you mentioned uh, the design teams and all who can also share, you can say Photoshop or those screens, right? So yes, are you sharing the screen at that time with the app? And uh, or are you sharing just a screenshot? So, so you can do that in a, in a couple of ways um, with certain applications that are browser based. So like the Office um, 365 applications, we can actually view those live in the workspace by sharing a link to, um, to SharePoint or to, uh, to OneDrive, um, for example. Right. Um, certain applications, certain versions of AutoCAD, for example, there is a web uh, interface for that um, and we can bring you can see just down here uh, um, I've got the um, the Bluescape um, uh, the Bluescape website up so certain um, uh, certain website um, applications you can actually just type in the the URL of the okay. uh, of the browser and then um, and then view that uh, directly in the um, in the workspace okay. perfect and uh, there's a question uh, by one of our attendees. What they are asking is they want to find out uh, what is what is the minimum hardware requirement to install or you know implement it. And if they want to implement it across the server, then how 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 can that happen? Yeah. So I mean, mo most of our customers use um, use a cloud service. So we partner with companies like Amazon to uh, to deliver Bluescape as a cloud service, and then. There's no, uh, the, 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 there's no apps or add-ins that need to right. be added onto the local desktop. Um, it just runs in a browser. So typically a Chrome okay. or, or similar um, browser interface. Or we have an app for the iPad and the Android um, tablet. So, uh, so on, on your PC or Mac in a browser or on your Android or, or um, Apple tablet, you can run Bluescape uh, directly, or we can run Bluescape on what we call a wall. So any any touchscreen, right. any right. vendor's touchscreen, LG, Samsung, you know, Planar, whoever's um, touchscreen device, we just need a Windows 10 uh, PC connected to that. 
and that becomes uh, an integral part of the um, of the Bluescape um, environment. For the on-premise uh, deployment, we can probably talk, talk about that one offline, but it, it's typically a large virtualized environment, uh, maybe Dell VxRail, um, for example, um, where uh, we, we run in a virtualized environment using Kubernetes. Right, right, great. Uh, one more question is, uh, does Bluescape integrate with other softwares? Uh, like example, Zoom and Microsoft Teams are the popular ones. But yes. what about other other ones? Yeah. Yeah. So so um, with with, um, with WebEx and Zoom, we have a, an Outlook plugin, so you can actually schedule um, a, a, a call within um, Bluescape, and that will you'll get a, a calendar invite that says, you know, please join this Zoom call. Click here, and it will actually right. open up the web, uh, open up the workspace in a browser. Um, and then it will also open the, the video window for WebEx or, or Zoom. Um, within, Microsoft, um, within Microsoft Teams, um, we actually have a plugin. So we can become the, the content pane inside a, um, inside a Teams environment. If I actually share, if I actually quickly search here for, um, uh, for video conferencing, um, we should be able to find um, uh, that. So I'm just going to quickly to that area in the um, in the workspace and then I'll um, I'll just show you what it looks like um, right. so in a um, in a Microsoft Teams environment um, uh, you see you've got your familiar uh, Teams environment down on the left hand side here and then right. Bluescape is just a tab so you can either add the URL so this okay. client apps this URL at the top or we have a, a little app that you can make available and then you can add Bluescape workspaces into your Teams uh, right. environment like um, I think, you know, what I think you guys must be uh, able to integrate it with Slack and so on and so forth internally via apps. Yeah, aspect, right? we yeah we do have an open uh, API. So some of the applications we are working on, we we have we already have some um, uh, integrations with some of the Adobe tools because nice. we are uh, we we're, we're let's say very strong in the media and entertainment. Um, space. So we've already done that work on some of the Adobe tools um, and likewise for, for Zoom, WebEx and Teams. Um, but some of the other tools, uh, yeah, we are working on API integrations or it is an open API. So, you know, customers and, and partners can actually develop those integrations themselves. That's, that's really great. Uh, one, one more question, which is there is how can Bluescape improve the efficiency of business. Now, I, I think this is a very broad topic. So, yes. but yeah, you could, you could take it there. It's very yeah, broad. I mean, just, yeah, I mean, just from my, my opinion, it's really about making people productive irrespective of where they are. So um, whether they're working from home or working from an office or working from some remote um, location, because of the, all of the content information and assets are brought together in a, in a single workspace, everyone is able to, uh, to, to contribute and, and to work together. It doesn't, in fact, even have to be in a meeting. So, you know, when we finish this meeting, I know we're recording it, but when right. we finish this meeting, um, all the content is lost. With Bluescape, it's a persistent workspace. So, you know, let's say you find half an hour when you want to go and work on a particular project, you can go into the workspace, get your work done, and then move on to something else. It's not just about um, uh, you know being getting work done inside of a meeting, right? And I guess if let's say um, we we leave the room right now, or we leave the uh, you know Bluescape at this moment, and as you mentioned, you might make some changes. So if I visit the next time, is there? I, I suppose I could check out what are the changes that you have worked on, right? Yeah, so I mean, you, you, you can, um, yeah, I mean, you can notify using a comment or a note card. So, uh, you know, I can just drop in a, a little note card like this one, right. and position that um, somewhere in the workspace, you know, take a look at this, or I can actually leave you a comment um, to, and then you'll get a message to say, Steve's updated this piece of content, click, click, click here, and it will take you directly to that changed piece of content. So it's very easy to notify your colleagues where where you've done work and completed you know a particular part of a project. Right. Uh, the, there's a question also like as you mentioned that you know and right now we are in this hybrid workspace. So people teams are working at home, teams are working in uh, offices and so on and so forth. So how how sec you said keep Bluescape is secure. So how exactly does that translate in the shared environment? 
Yeah, so, so we have, uh, first of all, there's authentication. So, you know, just having the URL is no good. You need to be authenticated. I have a login and password. Right. Um, for our enterprise version, that can be synchronized with single sign-on. So it, it keeps a record of, you know, with Active Directory of your password and your, your login. So the first thing is you need to, uh, you need to be invited and have a login to, uh, to Bluescape. And then all of the data that we transmit uh, to and fro from the, the browser back into Bluescape is encrypted. So it's 256-bit um, encrypted. It's regularly tested. I say it's certified to ISO. 27,001, right. which means we have sort of external penetration and, and usability tests um, with the, there's actually a security scorecard. I don't know if you've seen that. We typically get, you know, mid nineties um, out of a hundred for our, uh, for the security of, of Bluescape. So it, it's a very secure end-to-end -end application. Sure. Thanks for that. Uh, there's one last question, I think. Uh, so, the whole thing, like even uh, to what, uh, you know, Leon mentioned in his uh, bit of the presentation, like people are going to find it difficult to adapt. And each one of us has, you know, different uh, capabilities or you can say understanding levels. And that's where like right now, even though, you know, we are seeing this in front of us, still um, people might be confused. Like, because I got a question which says, how does Bluescape how is Bluescape different from other software? You know, like, is there any comparative software out there which people would look at? Because uh, yeah, I, I mean, guess it's to Zoom and Teams is something which people are using so much, right? Like this webinar is also on Zoom. So how do you kind of, um, if you had to distinguish uh, Bluescape, how would you do that? Yeah, so you, you can probably categorize, let's call them generally collaboration tools. So you can probably categorize them into, you know, at least three different categories. So there are the meeting centric tools. So, you know, typically Zoom, uh, Teams, WebEx uh, and, and other tools of, of similar are, are meeting centric. So you invite someone to a meeting. You share, right. you share some stuff during that meeting. And then when the meeting closes, all that information is lost. So, so that's what we mean by a, a sort of meeting centric um, tool. Then there are some white, pure whiteboarding tools. So they're really looking to replicate the, the Nobo board with the dry white markers that you have, you know, or the, right. or the flip chart. They really right. look, look to replace a, a flip chart. So there are a number of tools out there on the market that purely do um, the, the whiteboarding aspect of Bluescape. But Bluescape is, is pretty unique in the level of security that we have. So um, if you compare our, our security to, to many of the other tools on the market, it, it, it's, you know, it's far significant. And that's why we're, uh, we're successful with the US Department of Defense, UK MOD and, and other um, customers, enterprise customers that need that level of high security. Um, but also our integration with video and, uh, and documents. So most of the other pure whiteboarding tools, they don't support rich media content like videos or documents. So you would have to go out to Word or go out to a YouTube player or a video player if you wanted to play a, a video. They don't embed videos and documents and allow you to edit those documents in the same way as Bluescape. So, so we really differentiate ourselves in those two areas. Uh, the high security and also um, the, the handling of rich media. Perfect. So I think that's about it, guys. Uh, well, that tackles all, all of the questions. I would uh, leave it to you, Steve. You yeah. have something to Great. offer to the attendees, I guess. It, it, exactly. So thank you very much for everyone that's taken the time to, uh, to join us and for those that watch the video um, recording later. Um, we would like to offer um, through our, our friends at uh, All Wave uh, a free trial of Bluescape. So we have a free a two week uh, free trial. It's an unlimited users. So one person signs up and then they can invite all of their colleagues to um, to experience Bluescape for yourself. Uh, only thing we would ask is that please do register that with a um, with a business email. Uh, we don't uh, we don't allow personal um, email addresses um, uh, as, as users for, um, for Bluescape. So um, if you want to sign up for the trial, we just need your business um, email address. And, um, and again, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to us. Um, and thanks for those that, that watch the video afterwards as well.
thanks a lot, Steve. Uh, thanks a lot, Leon and and T. It was really great for you guys to take out time and you know kind of explain or give an insight into this. Especially, uh, I would really appreciate the you know initial bit uh, which Leon kind of you know uh, spoke about the post pandemic, like where we are going because uh, it is a confusing time. Like I know we have been in this state, I think for more than now one and a half plus years. However, still people are trying to cope up with, you know, what is going to happen. And especially with the new variants and all this coming in, people are looking at how exactly to, you know, tackle the situation or else at least work better and still have, you know, collaborate better. So I think Bluescape fits into that bracket, which helps us, you know, work and collaborate better. So uh, all the attendees, uh, we will be, you know, sharing, uh, a recording of this particular session also and we'll also be sharing the link uh, for the free trial so in case you guys have any doubts please reach out to us also and i think that's it guys thanks a lot for your time thanks very much to all my friends thanks very much, thanks, for thanks very much. yeah, yeah. Thanks. thanks a lot steve thanks a lot uh, leon and thanks, thanks a lot Steve, for taking your time take care bye thank you bye bye